There are several distillation calculators at chemicalengineeringnow.com such as batch, batch column, and continuous. Today we'll explore an example utilizing the continuous binary distillation calculator and McCabe method. To set this up we will create a material balance sheet with a system diagram and given data. In this example, distillation column is to separate 6,488 pounds per hour of feed mixture from a tank at 40 degrees centigrade and consisting of 19.5% methanol and the balanced water. We wish to obtain 98% methanol on the top and 1% methanol on the bottom by weight. Converting the feed to mole fractions shown in the shows the feed consisting of 0 0.120 mole fraction of methanol and 0 0.88 mole fraction of water. Similarly, converting the column top and bottom streams to mole fraction shows that the top consists of 0 0.965 mole fraction of methanol, 0 0.035 of water, the bottom 0 0.0056 of methanol, and 0 0.9944 of water. We could solve the simultaneous equations in order to complete the flow rates and the material balance, but the calculator will do that for us. We may have an existing column of known diameter or may be trying to determine the size of a new column. We will start by taking a column diameter of 3 feet in the rectification section and 3 feet in the stripping section, then explore smaller diameters. Each section is equipped with structured packing that equates to a random packing factor of 25. The packing factor is determined empirically for each type of packing. Packing factors can be found in literature or obtained from packing manufacturers for each type and size. The initial reflux ratio will be 1.5, but we will also investigate lower rates. So our procedure will be to calculate the number of separation stages, then calculate the flooding with the given column diameter and see the effects and change in the diameter, and then calculate the reboiler and condenser duties for the given conditions. To determine the Q, first to determine the Q value in order to calculate the separation stages, we must determine the bubble point temperature. To get to the, uh, so if we go to the physical and chemical properties pages at chemicalengineering.com, we can find the physical properties and polynomial equations for physical and thermo data. And we can use these this information in determining bubble point and solving the other solving for the other data necessary in our calculations. If we take this information and we go over to the bubble point calculator and we input our feed conditions, the Antoine coefficients, the activity coefficients, since methanol and water is a non-ideal liquid mixture. We calculate that the we can calculate the bubble point temperature. Now if we take this bubble point temperature over to our calculator, we can calculate that the delta te the delta temperature of the feed. And then using the polynomial equations, we can calculate the specific heat and the amount of sensible heat necessary to raise a mole from the feed temperature to the bubble point temperature. Similarly, we can use our s equations to calculate the heat of vaporization of a mole of feed. And with that, we can calculate the Q value. Now with this Q value, we can go back to our calculator. And we can input, again, the Antone coefficients, the activity coefficients, our feed concentrations, our reflux ratio of 1.5, our feed rates, our Q value, and we can determine the number of stages, the feed stage, and we can see the profile across the column. If we want to r reduce and see the effect of the reflux rate, we can do that, and by doing so, we see that the number of stages goes up to 25. So is this a good design? Well, we need to check column flooding and then consider the trade-offs among column height, column diameter, and exchanger sizes duties. So next, calculate the flooding with this column diameter and see if another diameter would be better. 
The table in the middle of this spreadsheet shows the temperature profile across the column, the top, the bottom, above and below the feed. We've also calculated the densities of the vapor, the liquid, viscosities of the mixture at each stage. And then we've taken the linear average, linear average between these stages, these to calculate an average of the middle of the bed. And we're going to use these values in our calculator. But it is advised that the viewer check the top and the bottom of each section for flooding. So if we put this data into our calculator, we run the calculations again. We have this data now here in the flooding calculator section. We find that the calcul that the well we have three feet. We find that the flooding in the rectification section is twenty one and in the stripping section is twenty two. Rather low values. If we want to see the effect of a two foot diameter column, we see now that our flooding has gone up. 48 and 50. Maybe more, maybe better values, maybe a better design. Next, we want to calculate the reboiler duty. To calculate the heat exchanger duties, it will be necessary to calculate the enthalpy of each stream. Note enthalpy values are not absolute but only relative. That is, only changes in enthalpy can be calculated. However, with that said, an arbitrary basis can be established for enthalpy values to be relative to each other. With enough demand, CHE now may add the option to use heat capacity in these calculations, but currently we use enthalpies. On the right side of this spreadsheet, we have calculated the enthalpy value for each stream. We can input these values into the calculator. Run the calculation again. We can find the duty of the condenser, the condenser of the re and the duty of the reboiler. Now the reflux ratio, section diameters, Q value, feed rate, concentrations, and packing type can each be varied to see the overall effect they have on design and performance.